This is a very quick video where I simply want to explain a very quick way that within ZBrush that you can measure a character that you're working on in terms of head units. I've recorded a video uh, about a week or two ago that really talks about the concept of scale within ZBrush. How can we work at a proper scale? How can we work with the character that, let's say it's a male, that uh, how can we work with a character that will be about 180 units tall? And how can we leverage things like anthropometry to make sure that uh, we are having these very exact, very correct body proportions and body measurements for our character? But truth be told, it is also very useful. And I know a lot of you also like to still measure your uh, character in terms of head units. Now, we know that a character is somewhere roughly about 7.5 head units tall, usually. So um, here's a very simple scene using the head of Adam Jensen that I have Frankenstein over a different body. This certainly isn't Adam Jensen's uh, normal body there. But um, we can already just go ahead here and just look at this very quickly and just look at the scale of the character here and just check to see if, first of all, everything is set at the proper scale following the video on scale that I had uh, recorded and that you can also watch. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in, a, in this particular video if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So we can, first of all, just uh, check the character and uh, we can indeed see here that if I take the height of the character that we are at about 175, 76 units tall. So that would be centimeters, uh, which means that this character is uh, well scaled uh, to be integrated in, let's say, something like a video game. So all of that is great, but maybe we do want to be able to look at this character in terms of head units there, right? We want to be able to measure how tall the character is in terms of head uh, units. We could, of course, take a screenshot of this, go in Photoshop and start doing a lot of little drawings to really kind of measure how tall it is. You know, we could do stuff like that, right? But truth be told, like, that's kind of a bit uh, tiresome. But so there is a way within ZBrush to do that very, very, very simply, okay? And here's how you go about doing that. And this works even if you are working at a proper scale, uh, or even if you're not working at a proper scale, in fact, this will actually work quite well. So here's what we do, okay? So first of all, we take the transpose line, and uh, by holding down shift, okay, and shift is actually quite important in this particular case, uh, I've clicked here on the top of the head, and I'm drawing a line uh, until I am pretty much right at the height of the chin, or just maybe like uh, a, a millimeter right under that there. So I'm still holding shift, and I will simply release my transpose line. And because I've hold down shift, it just makes sure that this line winds up being perfectly straight down as opposed to be a, uh, perhaps a little angled as may have happened had I not hold down the shift button there. And then let's go to preferences and let's go to transpose units. So this particular menu that's here under preferences, transpose units, okay? This is where all of the magic happens. Um, you can see these are all the default values that are there, units scale to one, that becomes important later on when we want to reset uh, our transpose line. But for now, what we're really interested in is where it is called here, uh, what is called here the calibration distance. As you can see, uh, which you can see is actually the height of our transpose line right now uh, that we have seen here. So I'm gonna take this particular value, I'm gonna set this to one, and now suddenly our transpose line will be equal to one unit. Now, this hasn't actually changed ZBrush's, um, the scale of the object within ZBrush. Our export scale value is also set to 90. So this is really just a display thing. We are now seeing our transpose line, which is the height of the head, be exactly one unit tall. So what happens if I draw the transpose line from the top of the head all the way to the bottom of the character? We can now see in the top left corner of the screen how tall our character is in terms of head units. And indeed here, I can see that my character is about 7.5 or actually 7.66 head units tall. So that's a very, very quick and easy way that you can measure the height of your character in terms of head units. If you're not sure whether your head is at the proper size in relation to the body, if you wanna make it bigger, if you wanna make it smaller, these sorts of things, um, it's good to keep in mind that not necessarily everyone has a head that is 7.5 units tall. Shorter characters will typically have uh, a head that is bigger in relation to their body. And whereas taller characters will typically have a head that is 
smaller in relation to their bodies, which uh, I suspect is often how we wind up having a sort of ideal canon, especially if we look at what Loomis uh, has uh, drawn over the years. He was uh, one of the ones that really have or had popularized that idea that characters should be about eight units tall. Um, for me, that really comes from the fact that a taller character typically has a smaller head in relation to their body there, and we tend to idealize taller people. Therefore, we idealize people that are about eight, uh, eight heads tall or so there. But certainly the average across the population really somewhere is somewhere about 7.5. So in a lot of cases, this is really what you want to be aiming for. Uh, if you're making just an everyday character, I suppose, <laughs> within ZBrush there. And uh, so this is a very, very quick way to check that out. Um, before I say just um, anything more, okay, uh, if, you're, if you wonder, okay, if you're exporting this out, uh, will this character now wind up being 7.5 centimeters tall? Let's say that you're throwing this back into Maya. The answer is no. Uh, your character will still be about 180 centimeters tall. Um, because as I said, the change we have simply done here to the transpose line is a change that is only visual. Uh, it's only temporary, in fact. Uh, if you go back to preferences, okay, in our transpose units menu here, where uh, it previously said one as a value for this particular unit scale here, now it says 0 0.04. But if we take this value and we reset it back to one as a default value, now our transpose line now gives us the same height of the character, about 175, 180 units, as what we had before there. This value, okay, uh, it, you can change these values as much as you want. Um, they won't save when you close ZBrush and relaunch ZBrush. They won't uh, get saved with your tool either. Uh, it's unclear to me whether they get saved if you save your configuration file, but I actually kind of doubt it. Um, but I suppose that would be worth for someone to try and maybe let us know in the comments of this particular video if uh, that is the case or not. I'd be quite interested to figure that out there. But these are not safe with your Z tool, okay? A very, very quick reminder for you, okay? If you're not quite sure that you remember anymore, like, okay, we say 7.5, but how is that distributed over the height of the character? Let me just give you a very quick reminder, okay? Something that I really like uh, just to use myself as a reminder when I measure the height of something and where each of these uh, steps should end uh, in a way there. So let me go ahead here and take the height of the head once more. We go to preferences, set our calibration distance back to one. And now our head is equal to one unit. So ideally, okay, what you want is, uh, and you can see as I draw the transpose line all the way down, you can see that we have these kind of uh, slightly thicker lines here that are showing up at every uh, one unit increment there. So you want, of course, your first head to uh, be at the level of the chin, of course, if that's not the case, if there's something wrong with your character there. You want your second head to fall uh, at about the nipple line. So my character right now is a little too low res to have uh, nipples, but if he did, that would be at about uh, the height of this second like large notch on my transpose line. So that's where you want your second head to fall. Um, your third head, you want it to fall at the navel, which is pretty much exactly where it is right now. The fourth head uh, that you want for your character, okay, so starting from the top and counting all, all the way down, your fourth head should be at about the level of the crotch, as you can see, so right under the crotch, so to speak. Um, I find the fourth head to sometimes be easier to place um, when looking at a character from the back because you want the height of your fourth head to be uh, at about the line here, at about the crease that separates the butt from the legs there. So, or maybe from profile, you want to hit that nice little crease there between the butt and the leg. And if that's the case, then you know that your first four heads starting from the top uh, have been well proportioned. I like to account for the half head in our 7.5 heads already. Um, as opposed to try and count 3.5 heads going down, which places our knee in a very weird spot, okay? Um, the way that I like to do it, okay, so once uh, we have confirmed that the crotch is at the proper uh, position, I suppose, uh, and we are exactly four heads down, here's what I like to do, okay? I like to subtract 0.5 heads. 
So, which means I essentially find the uh, the midpoint between the navel and the crotch or the butt crease, essentially. So I find I subtract 0.5 head from where I am down in the crotch down there, if you will. And that gives me actually that minus 0.5 heads should give you uh, about the height of something that we call the anterior superior iliac spine, uh, which is one of the bony landmarks of the body. It's a very important one. Uh, there's a lot of uh, muscles that are around that, that uh, connect to that, that you really have to become intimately familiar with if you really want to um, master your body anatomy there. And starting from the anterior superior iliac spine, which is about here, then you want to draw your transpose line all the way down to the bottom of the character. And that's where you have those four extra heads. So we started with four heads, we have subtracted 0.5 head, and now we're adding another four heads. So we wind up having 7.5 in the end. And doing it that way for me makes it very, very simple because it allows you to see if your knees are at the proper height. Because your knees should be at pretty much exactly two heads uh, all the way down, your knees should be crossing at the exact two heads mark there. And indeed, that is what is happening here. And from there, you have about more or less two heads uh, down to the ground plane afterward. That's how you can use the transpose line uh, inside of ZBrush to very easily measure the height of your character in terms of head units. Um, don't forget to check out that video that I have recorded on scale because it really elucidates perhaps a lot of the uh, mystery that may surround how does ZBrush deal with scale, how do you work with scale within uh, ZBrush properly there. All of that is answered within that video. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and until next time everyone, take care.